This problem here comes from the uh, wonderful field of physics, and it looks something like this. There's a pelican flying here, please excuse my artwork, flying directly due right with a speed v, we don't know what v is, and the pelican's flying 4.7 meters high. Now what the problem says is that in this configuration here, the pelican here sort of drops a fish, and from the drop point of the fish, say right here, as soon as the fish gets dropped, the problem says that the fish subsequently travels then about 7.7 .7 meters horizontally. And so what they want to know from this information alone is what was the speed of the pelican for this to have happened here. So the first thing I'd recommend doing here is, as the fish falls here, is to figure out exactly how long the fish is in the air, sort of like the hang time. The hang time here. And we'll just sort of call it delta T. How long is the fish in the air for? That can be solved rather straightforwardly here by using one of the equations you probably know from your physics course here. The y is y0 plus v0y delta t plus 1 half g delta t squared. This is sort of one of the equations of motion here that are undoubtedly in your physics text or have been covered in your class here. So what we can do then is just sort of use this to figure out how long the fish was in flight for, and we'll do it in the following way. We'll say that ground level right here where the fish actually hits the water or the ground, whichever it is, is equal to y is equal to 0. And we'll call this 4.7 meters here, this initial vertical height of the fish all the way here, we'll call that y naught. We'll say that's the initial vertical position of the fish. Now, since the pelican was stated to be traveling due horizontal here, there is no initial y velocity of the fish because the fish is traveling due horizontally with the pelican as well. So this entire term right here is just going to drop out to be 0. And also we'll say that there's a downwards acceleration on the fish of minus 9.8 meters per second squared as it falls. So let's just put some of that stuff together here. So we're saying that y is equal to 0. Um, y0, zero, the initial height of the fish here, is the 4.7 meters here. And there's a minus 1 half g times delta t squared, where g can just be put in to be 9.8 right there. So if you put all this business together here, and remember this g here is 9.8, then you can solve for the hang time of that fish. It'll be something like 0 0.97 seconds. So the fish is in the air for about a second or so. That's how long it takes to fall once the pelican releases it. Now once you have that, you're right on top of actually the solution to this problem here. Why? Because if the fish travels 7.7 .7 meters horizontally from the time it was released, well that's when it hits the ground right here and the problem sort of ends. So the, whatever the fish is going to do, it has 0 0.97 seconds to do it. So here's the way you can set that up. You can go to your other equation of motion here plus v0 delta t plus 1 half a delta t squared. But this is in the x or in the horizontal direction now. So there, no, there isn't any horizontal acceleration, so now this whole term is going to be 0 here, because I know a, ax equals 0. In other words, while the fish is in the air, there's no wind or anything blowing it left or right, so ax is 0 right there. And I'll call the initial drop position of the fish x0. I'm just going to call that 0. So I'm just going to say that this position right here where the pelican released the fish is my reference point at x equals 0. So see, I'm left with a rather simple equation now, v0 times delta t. And remember where v0 is the initial speed of the fish, which is the initial speed of the pelican. So this v0 here is that v that I'm trying to find of the pelican here. So we can just solve for that here. It's going to be x over delta t. But I know what x is. The problem told me how far horizontally the fish, travel, the fish is going to travel. That's 7.7 .7 meters and it does so in that 0 0.97 seconds because that's how long the fish was in the air for. So if I solve all that, put all that together and do a quick calculation, I'll get something like 7.9 meters per second. In other words, the pelican must have been traveling at 7.9 meters per second.